Hey folks, Mika here. No joke this time I'm afraid, as the month of June is a good one for gamers. Here are our top 5 picks that we believe make the cut. Fighting games have always been a bit of a niche genre. It takes hours of dedication and effort, not to mention a good connection to feel like you've probably grasped the often complex movesets associated with one. Well, Capcom took notice, and we finally get Street Fighter VI a vastly improved release over its less well-received predecessor. While the inclusion of the new drive system and its new moves is something we'll probably see a lot of discourse about in the coming weeks, there's no denying that the devs have been putting in an effort to make entry into this franchise as painless as possible. For starters, the game comes with three different control setups, classic, modern, and dynamic. Classic being the old input system, Dynamic being somewhat similar to the one-button systems you see in most fighting games, and Modern being something more akin to Smash, where special attacks are mapped to a directional button, the latter two systems making things easier for new players to pick up and learn the game. To add to this, you have the new Volt Tour game mode, which gives players a sizable chunk of single-player content aimed at putting those skills to the test. With some of the side jobs, you can do all but teaching you how to master motion inputs and the like. As its true sequel to the series after Street Fighter 3 and the various reviews putting this game at an astounding score, Street Fighter 6 is owned by Julian for our first pick of the month. Yeah, I know, you guys definitely didn't see this one coming. Blizzard returns with Diablo 4, and by all accounts, most everything is looking quite good. Taking place 50 years after the events of Diablo 3, we see the emphasis on the story with the arrival of the key figures, Inarius and Lilith. The crux of the campaign involves your character following with its tracks through the chaos, and I mean your character since the customization this time is nothing to scoff at. The game is set to be released with 5 classes and admittedly I'm a bit sad we're not getting our crusader slash paladin just yet, but considering the live service nature of the game, there is still hope. And yes, that comes with the usual battle pass and the like, not a fan. But that's all the gripes I have though, because the changes to the Diablo formula generally seem favorable. For starters, you're open world now and not instance, with 5 areas you are free to choose to, to go to quest, meet other players, and party with friends. You are encouraged to explore the map through the renowned system which rewards you with EXP and skill points on traveling all around the map too, incentivizing you to do so. Once you complete the campaign, you can also opt to skip the story on alternative characters, making the jump to endgame a lot less painful. Apart from the fumble Q&A session and despite the many controversies surrounding Blizzard, Diablo 4 is supposed to be an amazing experience. You know, after a long day of work, sometimes you just want to relax a bit. And well, all the fighting and the demon slaying really just doesn't cut it. If that's how you're feeling, then let me introduce you all to We Love Katamari Rero plus Royal Reverie by Monkeycraft and Bandai Namco. Untitled with gameplay far more absurd than the name it has, you literally pick up items and roll them into a ball. Yep, that's right. Toys, cows, buildings, you roll up anything into a ball in this quirky but oddly relaxing remaster of the 2005 Wheel of Katamari. Being a remaster, you can of course expect some new features, and Royal Reverie does not disappoint in this regard. You get an additional story where you take control of the young king of the cosmos, along with even more story beats and the usual heaping of remastered graphic and sound goodness. One thing I was not expecting was to get multiplayer though, so if you have a loved one along for the ride, get ready for an even more relaxing and chaotic, yes I know that's paradoxical, ride in Katamari Reroil plus Royal Reverie. Now this is a title I'm personally very excited for. As a longtime fan of Square Enix, and even a fan of the series, Final Fantasy XVI has been on my radar since its first trailer was released. The title is also helmed by Business Unit 3, the team behind the critically acclaimed Final Fantasy XIV MMO. I'm very keen to see their take on a single player game, which by the by seems to be a darker take on the franchise. In the realm of Final Fantasy XVI, people's lives revolve around Aether which flows from giant mother crystals. However, a phenomena called the Blight has been consuming the realm, leading to an unease among the various countries. Controlling the peace are the Dominants, which are honestly just people who can transform into Final Fantasy summons. The main story seems to follow the life of Clive Rossfield, the Dominant of Ifrit. After a harrowing night when he was younger, 
Clive is on a journey of revenge, which will lead him through the various factions of the game, as well as the other dominants, and perhaps even towards destroying the Mother Crystals themselves. Final Fantasy XVI does not have an open world structure, but consists of various areas the players can travel to and explore. The combat has received a Devil May Cry overhaul, as Clive can hack and slash away at his opponents while channeling the power of the various summons. It even comes with a feature that makes the system more accessible for various players. Either way, as a fan of Business Unit 3, I can't wait for Final Fantasy XVI. With a month packed with strong titles, Capcom's DS Remake might pass under your radar. But if you're the type who can fit in one more title this month, then Ghost Trick Phantom Detective might be the dessert to this month's main servings. You take the role of their recently deceased Sissel. Your job is to find out who killed you, why they did it, and in the process, save the people who are seemingly connected to your death. You do this by manipulating inanimate objects in the scene in order to save them through almost Rube Goldsberg-like puzzle sequences, with some excellent animation, quirky characters, and a bit of a contrived but enjoyable story. The puzzles in Ghost Trick, though tricky, might be an excellent entry to this month's main deliveries. And there you have it, those are our picks for the month of June. Personally, I'm excited for Final Fantasy XVI, among many things, and maybe you will even see us jumping into Diablo 4 a bit. But what about your picks? What are you looking forward to most? Let us know in the comments below. This is Mika from the Bold Not On Most World Maps, signing off.